really that's what you're trying to do is just get as good as you can get every year and whatever comes with that. I mean, everyone, everybody wants to win, you know, like what a lazy goal, but what's a realistic version of the team and then try to beat it. You know, like, oh, how can we get, let's try to get better than that. How do we get better than that? Welcome to the Jamoti podcast. We are all surrounded by amazing coaches and leaders. So let's get an inside look at not just what they do, but how they do what they do. After all, becoming the best versions of ourselves is Jamoti, just a matter of doing it. Today, we're joined by the head boys basketball coach at Jesuit College Preparatory School of Dallas, Chris Hill. In 14 seasons as head coach, Coach Hill has led the Rangers to 315 wins and 13 playoff appearances. His teams have made the UIL Regional Tournament in 2017, 2018, and 2021. Coach Hill has been District Coach of the Year three times, and before coming to Jesuit, he was the head women's coach at University of Dallas. Before we hear from Coach, take a moment to subscribe to our podcast and follow us on social media at Chimoti Podcast. Coach, what's going on, man? Nothing, nothing. How are you? I am good. Thank you so much for agreeing to talk hoops with me. This is this is quite a treat for me. Oh, I'm I'm thrilled. I was I was really surprised. No one's ever asked me to do a podcast before, so I got your text. <laughs> out. This is the right guy. I was I was I'm really excited. This is awesome. Whatever. I, I I've been a fan of yours since I was at McKinney, and I think we either scrimmaged you guys or we're watching you guys. Um, no, we play. I, I, that's where I met you. I met you in the uh, coach's hospitality room at that Plano term. Remember the AD used to come and do barbecue. And that's right. Our, and with that red, white, and blue ball. And you guys beat us like in the semifinals or something. Uh, but I remember talking with Coach Watson just about, we got to figure out what those guys do to play so fast and, and, and what makes them special. So I've been, this is a long time coming for me, man, just so you know. Cool. Yeah, no, this is going to be great. I love talking basketball. I'm excited. Tell me about your your spring, kind of what you're excited about coming forward here. You know, the spring's always fun because everybody's everybody's after something. You know, whether it's make the team, make varsity start, be one of the best players, whatever it is, everybody kind of has a new edge to them, you know. And so um, I always really enjoy getting to know um where they're at and what they want to do. And I think that's the biggest thing that I need to work on now is I want to know what everyone's trying to accomplish, you know. And so you, know, you have a freshman who kind of go in half speed and, and you assume he wants to make varsity as a sophomore, so you, you, you approach it that way. But maybe he doesn't. Maybe he just kind of likes basketball and he wants to go on a normal. And so it's, it, not, that, not that you ask him to do different things, but the approach is probably different. So right. I think starting off with, with getting no – who they are and, and where they're trying to go is really important. So having those individual meetings with guys in the spring where you actually get to not just tell them what you see and what and what you think they need to improve on, but really get to hear more from them. Where do you see yourself a year from now? Because I think you're right on the money. That does shape the way we coach and 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 talk to them in the spring and summer. Yeah, and even and even I don't even give them feedback until May because mm. you'll have that kid who who played in the post or played on the wing, and they want to try point guard or they want to try wing or they want to try post. They want to try something new. And if I if I meet with them before I give them a chance to kind of redefine themselves, they're going to stay in that on that lane that I put them in. And you know, some kids have the ability to grow and change and get better. And the spring's a great time to do that. So I just kind of throw them out there. We try different things and. I got a six eight kid shooting threes this morning. He's just looking at me like, "What are we doing?" I'm like, <laughs> "Why not?" And if you can do it, it'd be great. I mean, that's part right. of the garbage you be if, if the other big guy's got to come out on you, you know. And so, um, yeah, I don't even I don't even give my feedback. I, it's literally right now all, "What are you trying to do? What do you want for me at least?" So in there, like in, in any type of, of pickup or or competition that you're doing, are you allowing them? to experiment and to try those new things? Because I think sometimes in season, uh, we we may be handicapped or hold players back because we don't want them to necessarily do things that they haven't proven they can do yet. Yeah. Well, and, and we, we do talk about that with pickup. And I we stay way out of it with pickup for that reason. I'm like, that's a great time to try that other stuff. That's a yeah. great time to just go figure it out a little bit. 
I think the, the more they can play without being coached, I think is beneficial where they can figure it out. And, and, you know, there's that, that adage, people say like, if you get taught something, you know it well, but if you can teach something, you know, it really well. But I think if you figure something out on your own, it's the best, you know, and we're playing four minutes of one-on-one right now, just four minutes on the clock, same guy all week. And what we're trying to get him to do is, and I'm not talking to him. All I do is say, how'd you do today? I didn't ask for one. If I see him later in the day, it's just a point of talking. Like, hey, you know, how'd it go? Well, you know, well, he hit a bunch of threes on me. Okay, what are you going to do? And hopefully they get each other better. You know, like I learned how to make this kid not shoot threes. And so, okay, well, that kid now has to start driving a little bit, you know, and, and then I, okay, well, now he's driving on me. He's missing those, so I'm going to let him keep doing it. You know, so they're, they're thinking competitively with it, and I'm staying out of it. It's all up to them, you know, and because – I don't know, man. We spent so much time working on closeouts and take pictures with your back foot and all that. <laughs> some kids, but some kids can do it, and it's not the way I taught them. You know, and some kids aren't coordinated enough to do it the way I taught them. You know, because one foot can do it, the other foot can't do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we even got to the point where it's like, learn how you can best try to stay in front of somebody and do it. You know, and we still drill it and tell them the best way to do it. But at the end of the day kids able to stay in front of somebody because they figured out how to how to do it and stay out of the way there's not just one way to do those things that you're talking about there's a lot of different ways and like you're you're right on the money some ways may benefit some players because of physical traits that they have or mental ability that they have more than other ways i love that you have them playing one-on-one like i think that's really i think that's really good and it's something like we kind of have been alluding to it is that so much is structured right now for them. Always structured, always pretty rigid and controlled. But you and I, when we played, it was we're going to go to the play pickup at the park or we're going to go to up to 24-hour fitness and play against older people and, and just get beat up a little bit and try to figure things out on our own. Within your one-on-one games for four minutes, do you have any rules? that Because one-on-one can get taken advantage of if it's unlimited dribbles you know, it just becomes uh, NBA yeah. basketball at that point. Right. Well, we try to we try to make it make quick. So we're actually meeting about that. We've never done this before, to be honest. We've never done this one on one. But we're so like this it. week. It's check it out. We got three dribbles. Try to go. Next week, I think we're going to make the defense close out. Mm-hmm. And then the week after that, we'll be in the post. And the week after that, we'll do we call them puncher plays, where where you where you drive and you don't get anything. So what do you do now? So. Um, you know, the, 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 there's a guy named Mark Cassio who, 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 who has him on Twitter. And I learned, I, and I really like some of them. So, they, you, you know, we're going to say, okay, you got to do a Barkley and, or you got to do a Rondo, you know, and, and, and play. And that's going to start your one-on-one. Get them doing, yeah. we're going to try different constraints like that to just try to get them thinking. And then hopefully as we start building it, we'll, we'll start some five-on-five stuff out of that. So they learn how to read out of it, you know. So hopefully we'll guide it and build it so they can see where these one-on-one situations happen in five-on-five. Um, you know, and so like we'll, we'll be consistent with whatever we're doing in the one-on-one with what we want to work on, um, in the five on five. Yeah. I think that's awesome. Mark Cassio is a guy that, uh, about two years ago I met with and we were always a four out one in dribble drive team It started that with McKinney with Wes and, and then, uh, without having really a big that we wanted the dunker spot here at faith, we moved to a five out dribble drive and space and uh, pace offense that he developed or he stole or borrowed from somebody else and and tweaked. And I think he is, I I don't know. I think he's one of the geniuses in the game right now, personally. He's got a good eye, man. He does. He's got a good eye. And he's, he's, he he does. He's he's pretty innovative. He's fun to, fun to follow stuff. Um, And that's kind of the, kind of a trend now too, the the five out stuff getting to be really hard to guard. Yep. And things so you know we're we're looking at a little bit. I'm a big I'm I'm a tough sell on not four one I mean, just because there comes a point every year where the only way we're getting the ball behind the defense is throw the ball in the post. We're going to run into a team eventually where you know every school is different. You know so you got to know, but like most of the times we lose in the playoffs, that was all we could do. Like we us driving by guys was really really hard. Mm. Um, unless we were to try to run the clock down and just wait for that opportunity. And even then it's hard for us to do that against a team like that, because eventually, so I, you know, I think to get as good as we can at having someone to throw the ball into where you're catching it behind, you have your dribble, puts a little more pressure on you, you're under control, 
I just think it's important for us and what we're facing um, usually. And I think whatever the best and hardest thing you're going to deal with is what you is kind of how you need to play everybody outside of certain scenarios here and there, obviously. But yeah, it's tough for me to. We're talking about it right now. I got two assistants who are like, we should look at it. <laughs> uh, but we do. But, but like, we have the six eight kid, but then behind him, we have a really crafty post type kid, just lacrosse player too, and he's. Mm. You know, I think lacrosse really helps him in basketball because he sees it differently and he plays a lot of pickup basketball. So he, he can make weird shots. So he can make that like 13 foot off balance too that nobody can make anymore, you know. And, um, or I know not uh, the balance too. They should catch him too, like 13 sure. footer, you know. That, um, so it, it might fit us more with, if he's playing post to do some of the five out stuff, you know. Yeah. So we're thinking about it a little bit, but I think that's that's part of the, the fun. The fun of coaching is year to year is uh, taking who you have, especially, you know, the the programs that, that, I mean, if we're blessed to have people move in, that's something, but we're not actively going out and finding people to meet, you know, what, what our, what our program needs are. That That's the fun of it is, you know, we have a guy like this that can do some things. How do we maximize his talent and put him in a position to be successful, but to help us win as well. That's the fun of it. What do you think? What do you think? Verse five out, verse four out, one in with a with a solid post. Which one do you think is a better way? So, I if if I ever had a post that I thought there was value in entering the ball to him, where we could either he could score or he could create for our shooters um, or pass off of back cuts, that would put me in a tougher spot because I am I am pretty sold out to five out at this point. I want that paint to be open. The problem we always had with four out one in was the permanent help side defender that was just sitting in there. And 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 also to the 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 five out stuff with Mark Cassio, it's less and four out one in dribble drive. I thought it was, you know, running back, running back, running back, running back, catch it, just pound it, pound it, where everybody was trying to do the same thing. And not everybody was created the same way or had the same skills. With this offense, like I could take a, a big that hopefully he can shoot uh, because it, I do think if you have five guys that are threats to shoot, then man, five outs really fun. But uh, he can even in that case pass and cut directly to corners to create space to where uh, I've just I've never had a person a guy where we really want him to have the ball with his back to the basket and if I. If that ever happens at Faith, I may have to adjust or be creative or, or manipulate and find ways to get him in there. But I am pretty sold out to the five out. Uh, it's really four out with the instead of the dunker spot, you come out to the stretch. I love it. Yeah. It's hard to guard. You know, yeah, it really is. I mean, there's, there's no question about it. It's, it's funny you said it's, if you have five guys that can stretch it. I don't think there's an offense that's not fun. That's true. There are five guys that you can, or you can also just run play. You got a good post. You five out. You know the five out could be your base, and you just have some sets. Yeah. Uh, you know the other thing too, and, and that's a great point. Um, that there's always help there, without question. Um, but you know the other thing is sometimes driving for us, and this is why we're, we sort of looking at some of these puncture plays. You we get out of control a little bit. Yeah. You know, it gets really really quick, guys. So even when we are able to drive, it's it, it can be tough. You know. And, you're right on the money. I think I think if you're if if anybody's looking at becoming more of a uh, making plays offense rather than running plays offense, the two things you have to address early on are is shot selection because the moment that one is shot selection because the moment you open it up to guys be creative, take a double gap, get in the paint, and then they need to know what is appropriate or what they're allowed to look for at that point. And when they kick it, those guys need to know pro what what is a pro proper shot selection. Do we have it defined? Is everybody is everybody speaking the same language, or else little Timmy is going to be at the end of the bench thinking my great shot is at half court because I've watched Curry and I've done it a few times. So shot selection has to be there. And then the second one is you kind of nailed it: control. Uh, no, the number one playmaker commandment is thou shalt be under control. And so teaching them about playing off of two feet or barkling, like you said, I love that you use that term. Yeah. I mean, so with shot selection, what do you think? Do you tell your kids don't shoot? 
Like, I don't want you shooting this shot. We're not allowed to shoot that. No, like I do believe in uh, threes and frees. I like the idea of we're going to shoot in the paint and we're going to shoot behind the three-point line. But I don't outlaw dribble pull-ups. I think if, if you do have that mid-range game, you become really hard to guard. And But I, the problem is, is that the majority of guys don't practice that. And even in our own individual skill work, we don't spend enough time on that pull-up shot to make it, in my mind, like a really a good threat that I'm encouraging them to take it. So we're either getting all the way to the world, which is what we call the, you know, the three-point or inside the three-point key and in the paint, or we're kicking it for uh, in rhythm threes. But uh, all five guys on the floor are allowed to shoot open threes. And the fun thing with that is it makes them, I think, engagement in individual skill work is even higher because all of them can do those things. Uh, but the, the, where it gets tricky is after we discuss what a, what a nine is, a wide open layup, what an eight is, a contested layup, once you get into the sixes and sevens, that's where everybody really has to be on the same page. But uh, seven is a wide open jump shot within their range. Within their range is based on all of the shooting games that we play, all the charting and guys knowing each other. And then sixes, contested jump shots, those are the ones that you really have to eliminate from, from your game. But the cool thing about having a shot chart like that is it takes – Shot selection is personal to people. You tell a kid, don't shoot that shot. That's a bad shot. I think you shut them down. You take away a part of their creativity or their confidence. And, and, and so, yeah, I don't think I tell guys not to shoot. I'll ask them, rate that. What, what number was that on our scale? And if they say that's a six, well, let's, let's be patient for a better one. I think, I don't know, per personally, that's a, that's the way I like to uh, attack it. Yeah, it's delicate. I mean, you're right. You don't want them. You don't want them thinking about that when they're playing. You know, it's just I don't. Know, I don't. I don't want them thinking about that. You know, when they're playing at all. So they need to is. know. They need to know before before the catch. If I have space, is this a shot I need to take? Uh, I, 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 you know, even watching some of the U, UIL playoffs. I just found myself not know. I don't know their players well, and maybe those guys have demonstrated that they can't shoot those shots. But they're they're shooting harder shots later on, you know, in the possession. So they apparently can. But I was, you know, on the catches when you're the most open, and so I, I when you first touch it, and so I was, I was, I'd think to myself like, shoot it, okay, fine. shoot it. Shoot it. The longer you have the ball, the higher the chance for the t for a turnover to happen. Uh, yeah. But I don't know. I don't know if that's how everybody views it. I tell you, I, I'm I'm glad some of our kids can't think. Don't know what I'm thinking sometimes because I mean the amount of shots <laughs> would have been like, you know, it have been something else. Yeah, but it's fun to it's fun to talk talk about those things and and once you do start to open up the floor and allow for the for guys to create quickly, and uh, I think I think I think guys would be surprised at the quality of shots that they get without having to run plays. But then you're I think you're right on the money early on saying, you know, if we have a guy that it brings value to our team to have him there and to get the ball to him in that position, then you have to do those things. Right. I don't. We we make a big deal out of. Like, you know, going back to those individual meetings, when we meet in the fall, we just kind of say, you know, what are your strengths? And that's what I want you trying to do when you're in the game. And so if they don't say to me, shoot a bunch of threes, yeah. okay, so are you going to shoot, you know, that's kind of the counter. That's really the only time we kind of talk about it. So we don't even look at us, don't shoot. It's like, what are you doing? Where do you add value? What can you bring that other guys can't, you know? And so we had a kid two years ago, I mean, he, he just didn't shoot. You know, and everybody knew he didn't shoot, but. He could guard, he got offensive rebounds, he built on the floor, he took charges, he made extra passes. You know, what happens quick, you know, you forget the quick rotation who you're covering sometimes, especially when there's no shot clock and you can be patient, you know. And so ball comes in, they turn, they're flying at him before they realize, oh, no, you know, this That's is right. a big guy. And if it happens quick, you know, like you yeah. said, you're making those quick decisions, you get the defense rotating, you can get away where, where he's making it, you know, but – 
we have kids like that sometimes that will just buy into knowing I'm a screener, I'm a cutter, I'm a rebounder. And there's going to be guys that take shots they shouldn't take, and but they make them sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like when they're playing losing, it goes in every once in a while. I think the more that players are playing from confidence, I think the more lucky they become. The more yeah. that they hit some shots at times that in your heart, like as a basketball purist, you may be thinking, Oof, that's that's quick or oh, man, that's a little deep or that's not. Uh, I don't I don't personally believe in we've just shot threes the last three possessions. We need to shoot something different. I, I think the more you take, the more you make. And, and if we just missed four in a row, we're probably going to make the next three in a row. Like that's just kind of where my brain goes. But uh, I, I do think the more that they are playing, even those guys, like you said, that bring value in other ways. One, if they know that if I am open, I have the right or I have the ability to shoot and I won't have to look over my shoulder. Um, and if it's within our shot selection language or culture that we have, I think that'll end up making them a little bit more engaged in practice and wanting to maybe spend a little bit more time on their on their shot. But, and I, and I just... That to me, it just seems like a fun way to play and train your guys. Coaches, the Jamoti podcast is sponsored by 3-on-3 Hoops Hub. 3-on-3 Hoops Hub has run over 350 3-on-3 basketball leagues for kids since 1997. 3-on-3 is the ideal format for players to get a lot of opportunities, work on all skills and positions, and have fun with their friends. Whether you want to build your program, raise some funds, or start your own business, you can bring 3-on-3 to your community and do it like an expert by learning from the best with 3-on-3 Hoops Hub's free 90-minute training. You can register at the link in the show notes. What's the best thing that you've borrowed lately? So last summer, um, I, I heard about this book, uh, The Coach's Guide to Teaching. Did you hear about that, Doug? I, I have not. So he's basically, he's a teacher. And he basically took all these classroom ideas on how they teach in the classroom and applied them to coaching. Um, and he's a soccer guy, you know, so it's a lot of soccer examples and stuff, but it's one of those things that like, it's a hard book to read. It's like a textbook, you know what I mean? And, and then he'll have links, really, but like he has a website. So he has these links in, in a chapter. So you can go to the website, click on this link, and you can watch an example of what he's talking about. And, oh, wow. And, and the resources he uses, I mean, he has rugby coaches and women's basketball coaches and bas and soccer stuff. And it's just, you know, there's a great video of they follow Pete Carroll down, you know, in Seattle one time. And, but I mean, the, the 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 book opens with this: the the most important skill coaches have is giving feedback. Mm. And how many coaches practice it? And it kind of punched me in the gut. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, man. And the biggest thing that really hit home was. How much are you? How much are you giving them whenever you stop? So when you stop the team to talk, how much are you giving them? So say I tell them four things. Say say we're not blocking out. We got to look down the floor. We got to feed the posts and see they're controlling your drives. Okay. So now when they start playing again, I have to watch every kid and who's doing those one of those four because they're not all going to do all four things. Yeah. You know. So whichever one I whichever one was the most important that I'm hitting on. Okay. I, I maybe I'll hit that, but then I'm telling those kids I don't really care about those other three things. Or I can't hold, a, can't hold them accountable for those other three things because all I'm doing is talking about this. And, and so when you stop and you say one thing, now everybody knows we're looking for that. And then you better, you better comment on it again or you're telling those kids, this isn't really that important. I just said it because I was feeling emotional at the time. But just that idea of being really deliberate about your foot feedback Every time you stop, I mean, just flip my head, man. It was almost like I almost overdid it, you know. I think, but but it's just oh. how do you, how do you feel like you overdid it? Where I just I I I I'd hold back other stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? I was I, I there's other things that I think our kids can handle that are staples in the program. You know, that's kind of the thing I learned was like they know you got to sprint back on defense. So yeah. I, I'd hold out on that one because we're talking about looking down the floor. Whereas they can, they know they got to sprint back. You know what I mean? They can, yeah, they can yeah. handle their, so like figuring out which kind of feedback you can throw in there with the thing you're focusing on to help tie it together a little bit, you know, but, but whatever it is, just that idea of being a little more self-critical on how you're coaching and how you're, is just basically is your gym a good learning environment? Yeah. It was the question. And, 
you know, every page I read, you should see this book, man. It's just got writing on every page. Yeah, I, I wrote it down. I'm going to check it out because I think, oh, I think you're right on the money with, first of all, uh, coaches in general, we, we, we all, everything we're about to tell our players, we, it's gold. And we believe that they need all of it and, and, and that they'll actually absorb all of it. They are maybe listening to the first thing, possibly the second thing. If, like you said, if it's a standard that they, it just has been hit, we've been hit over the head with it again and again and again. But one of the things that was, that helped me out was working for point guard college for PGC. I directed them yeah. for five years. Mono Watts of the president came to my very first session and I wasn't prepared. I actually thought I was just going to be observing because I was training to become a director. And the dudes just threw me in and said, hey, you're going to do this gym session. Well, I thought, I've, I've been a coach for years now. I can do this. And so I was watching the gym, you know, and I blow my whistle, coach something, blow my whistle, coach something. And I hit so many different things throughout. And Mono's just standing over there. Have you ever met him, Mono Watsa? I mean, he's incredible. But he, he's he's just he's standing over there taking notes. And he said, "You're you talked way too much," and he said, "You you you need to give them one thing, like like kind of like what you just said, one thing that they really need." And I think what that'll do is for coaches is it'll make us be better. We have to know what is really important uh, for these guys. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. It also helps you focus in on, okay, we're really going to work on this. And that's the thing the whole team needs. And then, you know, I got a, I got an assistant. He's, and I, I, this isn't him, you know, he's probably better than I am in a lot of things. He really is. And, um, but he's now free to kind of wander around and grab guys and then give them individual things kind of on their own. You know what I mean? And say, hey, yeah. when we're doing this. And so the coaching becomes more specific, you know, and, um, it's just been, it was, I thought it was really helping. There's certain days where I could really see the benefit. Of that. And there were certain days I overthought I was trying to do too much. And I mean, I was trying to do it too much. You know what I mean? I was yeah, trying to, yeah. but because I mean, this book, like I said, it was just like every page you read is like, oh, been doing it wrong. Oh, been doing that wrong. Oh, been doing that wrong. And then, um, you know, I think last year, like, now we're, we're, we're working hard to kind of find that balance um, of, of, what our kids already know, what we can do, and how we can we can bring it along. Um, but even then, so this is cool. This, and this was great. Is you you do a defense table hey, guard and pick and roll this way. This oh we're working. Okay, hard right, You got to do this. You got to do this. You got to do this. So you play, and then you move on to something else. So say okay, now we're gonna work on feeding the post. So we will feed the post. So you come back to 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 ball screen. So it's like you give them the idea in, in the classroom is you know you just give them just enough time to forget. And then you make them bring it back on the road. You don't go back over. It's okay. Ball screens now. Let's go. And man, that really, you can wow. see it. Like the, the, the difference. So like the next day when we do it or it would happen, they had a better understanding a little bit because, you know, if you work on something, the first hour of practice on Monday and it doesn't come up again until Tuesday later, they're going to mess it up, mm -hmm. you know, and in a way you don't like. But if you do it on Monday, then you sneak back in and do it again on Monday. Then you sneak back in and do it again on Tuesday. And then on you do it the end of practice Tuesday, they're gonna mess it up. But it's in a way you can see why they yeah. messed it up, and there's a there's a purpose to how they mess it up, you know. And it's I'll better look. mistakes, you know what I mean? It's yeah. better mistakes. So they're, they're farther along in it every time that they're visiting it again. I, yeah. I think that I think that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. This little Bob, and he's he's on a couple of podcasts too. He just made me. He made me feel terrible, you know, <laughs> and motivated at the same time. Yeah. Like, that's a bad thing to feel, you know what I mean? And you're getting all this good information, but like my, I have like 30 pages of notes on this book. And I was just like. I think though, I, there's another part of this though, that I don't want to miss is it, it has to do with you. I think that's how long have you been a head coach? Um, I've been a Jesuit for 14 years. Okay. And I was, I was a women's division three coach right out of college. You know, my second year out of college for two years. So, so. You, you've been doing it. You've been doing this for a long time, but the the ability or your willingness to pick up a book, to learn something new, to to not be so stuck in your like. I feel like I, sometimes I'm very stuck in my ways, and when somebody challenges me with something that I could be doing better, I, I almost I have this feeling of 
God, you know what? Don't, don't, don't tell me, don't tell me how to check. It's almost like we want our play. We want our players to be coachable and to be open to learn new things and adapt and try new things. But how often as coaches are we putting ourselves in those positions? So, man, I just want to celebrate you for, for doing that and, and going through that process. Well, I can tell you where, I can tell you exactly the moment that that started was I was the same way. Like if, if someone said I might be doing something, like I have another assistant who's a science teacher who he's a science teacher and he's, he's got a PhD. He'll be the first one to tell you. And, but like his his knee jerk is to argue with it to anything you're doing. He'll just be like, why are you doing it like that? And wouldn't this be a better way to do it? And then like you'll have this argument or discussion, whatever word you want to use, but I'll get all fired up. Yeah. And at the end, you're like, yeah, I agree with you. I just want to see what you thought. And then you just walk out the door, you know, and like, but you have guys like that. It's just, it's, it's great to have them. But we had, I can't remember what year it was, but we won district one year and it was a tie. We tied with someone else, but it was a, a district. I didn't think going in, that was not what a realistic expectation I thought to, to, to finish in the in first in this district. I thought third, maybe, maybe I'd be on the bubble for playoffs would be great, you know, and I'm driving home. After the game, and I thought to myself, man, maybe I'm good at this. Like, I literally thought that. I remember that popping into my head. And the next three years, we lost the first round. Two of those three years to teams we had beat before. And I honestly think it's because most of the kids on our team were ready for the season to be over. Hmm. And I think it's because I had that moment of, you're good at this, bro. Don't change anything. And so, like, every year, Every year from that moment on, it's what what didn't work. Yeah, what what it could have been better. And for instance, like you got a team of eleven kids, and then you have a team of fourteen kids. You can't coach a team of you can't coach a fourteen man roster the same as you coach an eleven man roster. And like I did things like that. I just I, same approach, same everything. It just it wears them down, you know. Yeah. And like you have a team of eleven, you go for an hour and a half. Every you going hard the whole time, and then. But, yeah, but, you know, four of those kids want to play in college, so they love it. They want to do it like that. Or, or you have a very clear top seven one year, and then the next year you have 12, really, that you're flipping coins, you know, and they all got to be managed differently. You got to handle practice differently. You got to have meetings differently. And I, I, wasn't, I wasn't open to it. I was doing things, I was doing things the same way, and, and it made me real paranoid. <laughs> to be yeah, honest. yeah. I think that there's a that's a great question of is it is it system? Do you have a system that you are going to run? And system isn't just on the floor, but a way of doing things, no matter what your personnel has, says. Or will your system adjust to the players that you have that year? And I think I think uh, that's a great reminder that you had right there that. Uh, to self-evaluate after the season, but also not get stuck in that mode or rut of, hey, it worked last year, so why not just replicate that again? No, like, you know, be where your feet are, have your eyes open, and be ready to adjust and change depending on their needs. I think it's a great reminder. Brand new every year, right? Every year you're starting right over. Like, when they come back in August, it's brand new again, you know. What opportunities for learning and growth have you recently found? Same thing with that book. And kind of like what you were talking about with Coach Watson is like, we have a, we had a coach who is a department chair. And he was one of our, same guy, doctor, he's a PhD. So, so he kind of got pulled more to administrative over. So he couldn't really coach, but he wanted to help. So we had him evaluate us. Like you do with like with a classroom, and um, he he would watch the JV and say, "Hey, here's." So we had him watch like, "How long did you talk at the stoppage? How much did you give him? Did you bring it back up again? You know, are there any kids in the gym that you talked to almost exclusively, or are there any kids that you didn't say anything to during practice? Yeah. Like wow. that kind of feedback he gave us, and but it was really like the most useful thing was you didn't talk to this kid. Mm. Um, and it was two kinds of kids. One, it was the most coachable kid who does everything you say all the time. He doesn't get a word, right? Because he's just doing it. He's doing a great job. And the other kid is the kid who's maybe a little behind, you know, and you're getting ready for games, and so he doesn't get hit. And so to know that, be conscious of it. So even if it's grab the camera and like, I didn't talk to you today because you were awesome. You know, like you did a really good job. Yeah. And that's it. It's eight seconds. But if you don't realize you didn't talk to him, 
Do you think you just assume he knows he did great? You know, how can that hurt to know that and tell that kid? And the other kid, you know, you say, you come in before Brad, you say, hey, man, we're working on some certain things. They make sure you're crashing boards every time. That's what you can bring. Make sure you're really hitting, you know, you remind them of, you know, we have something called lab work. We put it on. We have, and so everybody's got one thing they're really harping on. And we give them one and they pick one. And so we go, go over and talk about the lab work with them. Brad, hey, man, you know, this is, this is what you really got to be working on. You know, this can help change your change your, your trajectory a little bit. You know, if you get better at this, today hit that, you know, and whatever it is. Like, you, kids shouldn't come in your gym for two hours and you say nothing to them. Yeah. You know, I just think that's a that's a mistake, but it's so easy to have. We have a kid right now who's a walk on the Kansas numbers. Tim Jankovich's son, Michael Jankovich, just did what he just did. And you told him once. And then four years later, he's still doing what you told him as a freshman. You know, like, so, like, there were, he's a great example of a kid. I would go practice without talking to him. Yeah. Just, I just didn't need to. <laughs> you know well, what I mean? And how often do the, the players, sometimes they're your ta- more talented players, but how often do our high-maintenance players just monopolize our time and we give them yeah. all of our energy? And I find my eyes – darting to those players and maybe because i feel like they are going to slip up and i need to be there to catch them you know but i, I think you're right on the money there it's almost like i think the other part of it too is they try to get away with so much and you need them so they're gonna play so you don't want the other kids seeing them get away with stuff yeah right yeah. so you're like well i, I need to I keep an eye on him too because i don't want the other kids trying to pull the stuff he tries to pull and i don't know the answer it's probably different for every kid but yes i mean sometimes those guys drawing all your attention or are close on something. Sometimes they're close on something or they can help yeah. in a way that, that other kids can't. Um, I don't know, but that was the other thing. The other thing that kind of came with that idea is I put a microphone on one day during practice. Oh, uh, that was. Re- yes. You recorded know. yourself to listen yeah. to it. And I, wow. I just repeated myself. Like I talked, I have a 30 second stoppage and I'd say block out 17 times, you know, and, I did a great job. I was inside 30 seconds, but it could have been eight seconds. Yes, right. You know what I mean? And, and or, I don't know. It was one of those things where you're just listening to us. And, and I would finish one time and I'd say, what did I just say? I don't gibberish. even know. I don't just even coach know. speak. Gibberish, gibberish, yeah, gibberish. And, and and right. Coaches are jealous of their time. So, like, meaning uh, we, we want our players' attention and we don't want – we, we spent so much time on this practice plan. We don't want any deviation from it. But I don't think – how often are we actually valuing or respecting our players' time? And part of that is how we say things, how clear we are. Like, just think, those 22 seconds that you could have saved right there, you could have gotten a few more reps in and whatever you're doing. And it, was, it would have been way more impactful. But yeah, man, coach, you're, that's some good stuff. Like, but that was, but that's also cool. We have that resource to where you know we have a guy that has a microphone they can put on. But I mean, that was cool. I mean, to, to be able to listen to myself for a practice, I don't want to have to fast forward when I'm watching practice, you know. And if I'm talking yeah. too long, I'll fast forward, you know. And so um, we try to keep it to the length of timeouts. You know, once the drill's going, it's 30 seconds or less. In between drills, we can go to a minute. Do while we're explaining the drill, then we, you know, we can get a little bit of that. They're not going to get all of it. I get that. But to challenge them to hold their attention is not a bad thing. Like, I'm not going to talk for 30 seconds just because I'm afraid they're going to lose their attention. Because, look, you watch these college games, there could be a stoppage to where the refs are doing something or there's a, you know, there's, there's a fight in the stands or whatever, and you got to yeah. stop. And they got to stay focused. And, yeah. you know, halftime, like there's a, there's halftime sometimes where we may talk longer out in the hallway before we get in. So, like, they're gonna, they got to be able to do it for yeah. a little longer sometimes, too. And, you know, we, we got to meet, we got to meet in the middle. I got to be better and they got to be able to deal with it when I'm thinking out loud. Man, but I would imagine the, the, the book that you read, taping yourself like that, recording yourself like that, listening to it back. Like, I would imagine you're a better coach today than you were five, ten years ago. And I think that's a challenge for all of us is in what way, based on, like, right now, when we're talking, it's March and all of our seasons are over. In what ways am I going to be better 
come next season. Because I think so much I focus on how can I get my players to be better, more skilled, more dynamic, stronger, better shooters, all of that. But how, you seem to really find ways to grow in season, out of season. I think that's impressive. Well, I don't. I don't know. I, I think it's because I'm paranoid. You know, I'm just always trying to search and stuff. But well, but but like, you go back to being valuing the kids' time, and that's exactly what it is. I got to make it worth it. You know, and so I got to know answers to these things. And, and and you, God, that's a great point. Like we're so good at giving other people things to work on, we don't look inward enough and say, well, I, what do I got to get better at? You know, until. Until you lose a playoff game for a bunch of people, then you realize, oh, I better get better at this. Or all those same people who come, which is the wrong reason to get better at, you know, right? I mean, so. Yeah. How cool would it be? How cool would it be if we took the approach of I'm going to improve and get better and not wait for the cause or the reason for that to be a a bad season? I mean, I think some of our greatest growth is always after failures, but maybe the, the secret sauce to some of these dudes that have success. And I, I would put you in that category of guys that have success uh, over and over and over again. Um, are, they're probably the ones that kind of some of the things you said, they start fresh every the, every year. They're not just banking on the ways that they've always done things because it worked in the past. And they're trying to go out and talk to people, read things, self-evaluate. Uh, I just, I, I don't think that process ever stops. Never. No, you're, you're 100% right. I, I don't think so either. The Jamoti Podcast is powered by Sideline Interactive. Sideline Interactive is the leading manufacturer for high-quality, innovative scoring tables and LED video display boards that help coaches and schools bring more excitement to fans, create huge fundraising opportunities, and make their jobs easier. Visit sidelineinteractive.com to check out their amazing products. What's one quality that you see in great leaders? Um, I don't know why I picked this one because it's such a hard question, but I like talking about leadership. So I don't really know that I have a good answer for that because I think you've got to be so dynamic, but I think probably a consistent thing, especially like in basketball programs specifically, is these guys know who they are and they know what they're, what they're about. Like you watch, you watch their teams play and you can tell, okay, this is what this guy's, like you watch Virginia play. Yeah. Humility's clearly emphasize like those guys are about each other Purdue's character Villanova attitude you know what I mean like these things and you can see it how they play and 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 it just and it just comes out but but I think identity identity is what you're yeah, talking like, they know who they are and yeah. like everything you hear them talk about is consistent is there's a consistent message and baseline in every answer they're you know, one of the podcasts you did, Coach Fitch was that way. You know what I mean? The, he yeah. was like, everything he said was in line with everything. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. like, this guy understands who he is and what he's what he's trying to be. And, and it's not just like, look at look at Coach Lloyd, who's in Arizona now. He was at Gonzaga for 25 years. Great, doing a great job. You know what I mean? But like, nobody really knew who he was. And I think that's another quality is they don't, it's about doing what you're supposed to do, not the credit, you know? Nice. and, and and you see, you see, you know, I think the Gonzaga guys like, you know, Coach Lloyd being there for so long, Coach Few. Coach Tang now going to Kansas State. You yeah, know, right. From 19 years as an assistant coach and being for Coach Drew being so instrumental. and But just being faithful and, and being great in those moments of where you're at. And so that when your opportunity comes, you're ready to take it. I think so, you're, those are great examples of guys like that. But being secure too, yeah. to where I'm not going to run away from Baylor for the wrong thing. Like he doesn't, he wasn't looking for a head coaching job. He was looking for the right situation to where where he could help kids shine or he could shine, whatever it is, you know. And so same thing with Lloyd. Like he's just like, well, I don't need to leave. I'm doing, I'm doing good things. I believe in what I'm doing. I don't need, I don't need to have my own program just to have my own program, you know. Yeah. And so. You know the setup for success there. I think is is high when you when you see that kind of patience because they're secure in who they are and what they're trying to do. So I think in college it's a little different. You can look at a roster or a league and know, okay, I can I can do this there with them. Yeah, yeah. But that that man, we're kind of getting in some some cool areas though, like and, and things that I've wrestled with. You know, being content, like content. Sometimes people have that. It sounds negative, like you're lazy if you're content. 
I think content is just trusting that you're at the place where you're supposed to be and not, even though my feet are here, I'm looking out towards the future. Cause I think once you start to do that, you lose the focus on those young men, those individuals that have been put in your life for a reason. Uh, but I, and I think those, those names that you mentioned and, you know, you've been at, been at the same place, coach Fitch, coach Watson, like those dudes that have been, and not not that moving from job to job is bad. So I don't I don't want I don't mean that. If you feel like it's the best opportunity for you and your family, you feel like like you're supposed to do that, then and, and you take advantage of it. But there is something I think guys that have been someplace for a long time, they have figured out the secret of being content with where they are. Yeah. Well, in coaching, it's hard to find a place that you feel like you can be successful and not have to look over your shoulder. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and um, that's a hard thing to consider leaving yeah, when you're that's right. in the coaching world where you have a, a good base on support. But also I think when you get a feel for what it takes to do well at that place, because they're all different. Every school has got different cultures, different kinds of kids, yeah. um, you know, different kinds of neighborhoods, different kinds of middle schools that come up. I mean, there's there's going to be some underlying culture to all the different places, you know. And so to, to, to find one that fits with what you're trying to do is a, is a great – there's a lot of value in that. Yeah. You know, and so, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, even – like because you're right, content, it's – I like the way you're putting it. It's make, I'm literally – my head's spinning a little better right now. Um, cause you're right. The knee jerk is content means you stop looking, but yeah. content means you're, 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 you're happy and growing too. You, you're trying to, you're trying to do it. The make the can. big time, make the big time where you're at. And if the yeah. big time is actually big time, then great. But if cool. it's not, yeah. I mean, I'm at a, a 5A TAPS private school where, you know, there's 350 kids at our school and there's times where you can look around at others, uh, not, not, not only success, but you know, facilities or athletes. I mean, watching the UIL playoffs, watching McKinney play, you know, just the athletes and levels. And, but that, that, then, then you're, you have to, I think all those guys too, that you mentioned, they know their why, like that identity, they know their why, and it starts from them and it trickles down to their program, the way that their players talk to each other, the, the way that they play. And all, all, everything we've been talking about today is just, learning really to how to know yourself as a coach yeah well and the other thing you say there too is like you say have success you know like and, and what does that even mean like what success to you might be different mm -hmm. than what it is to me you know and so knowing what your version of successful is is another thing that's really important yeah you know and so because that's coach, another one. coach thomas so my high school coach tommy thomas was was incredibly successful, but not only in, I mean, he, he did have some great teams and he won uh, some big games and, and had some great players come through Darren Williams, guys like that. And, but I would think that his greatest success is the way that is the relationship he had with players and how he stays connected to them. Because this, this, this idea hit me. When I, you know, my first couple of years at Faith won some games and I started to do the math. Okay, if I do this for 40 years, I could have that many wins. Like I, I just to be transparent, you know, that, that, that math started going and, and, and thinking of that type of legacy to lead. And, but then I thought back to Coach Thomas and uh, I, I did one of my early episodes was with him and we did discuss his record. It's not, it's not like a, uh, earth shattering record and it but man he was impactful and yeah so I think, impact, yeah yeah i think it's the, the ultimately the record and and the the championships or anything like that he, after he retired it just didn't matter anymore like nobody talks about the colony basketball in his era much anymore or all those wins but man anybody brings up his name you know, God, I've talked to a lot of guys about you and, and, and that I was having you on and just wanted to, you know, if they had any thoughts or ideas or questions. And, man, you just get the feeling of, of the way that people talk about Coach Thomas. They talk about you in that same way. And, golly, that's something to aspire to. 
Uh, that's, that means a lot that you said that. It's, I want to know who you were talking to. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay you. I'll pay you. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. So, um, but y- yeah, I mean, it's it's just like you know, one of the best years I think we ever had here. I think we ended up 16 and 13, lost in the second round, you know. But, man, they, they dealt with a lot. You know, they dealt with a lot. And they just, you know, we had kids come late. I think we were two and nine or something, you know what I mean, to start. Yeah. And then we went 11 and three in district or something. We really, you know, really turned it around. And, and But, like, I think if you're on the outside, it probably looks like a normal year, maybe a good turnaround, you know. But when you're on the inside of those things, it's just got a different look, yeah. you know. And, and um, you know, this year's team even. I think we finished 16 and 14 and lost in the first round, got third in district. But from where we were, to where we finished, I think we got a lot better, you know, and I think everybody felt pretty good at all the kids felt pretty good about it. And it was a hard year. Like, you know, we had a big, big roster and a lot of kids didn't get a lot of opportunities, but they, they kept a good attitude. They practiced hard every day, you know, and um, I thought there was a lot of good that came out. We haven't done the exit interview stuff yet. So, I mean, I may, you may have to edit this, <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, I thought overall we, you know, we got better. You yeah. know, and it really, that's what you're trying to do is just get as good as you can get every year and whatever comes with that. I mean, everyone, everybody wants to win. You know, like, what a lazy goal. Yeah. I mean, if, if the no goal is, uh, yeah. I don't, I got I hope we're mediocre. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, um, but what's a realistic version of the team and then try to beat it? You know, yeah. like, oh, well, how can we get, let's try to get better than that. How do we get better than that? But I, I just I do think I mean I think you're right on the money and I don't I don't know how many co- maybe there's more more than we realize but how many coaches are process based like that because that's what you're talking about is guys every day our goal is to get one percent better today it's the only thing we can control obviously like well, I mean I don't know about you but we talk about a state championship one time and then it's kind of at the beginning of the year where hey guys ultimate goal win a state championship if it's not if it's not the goal like if it's not what we're the highest peak that we can get winning wise then what are we doing here like are we are we trying to be third are we trying to be mediocre but then man after that the only way to get there and then the only way to have i think to have success in your season no matter what is if it's process based and like you said 16 and 13 is that the record 14 14 but like yeah. but incredibly successful like to me that's that's the sign of a transformational culture instead of looking at this season like golly just what a i mean we we're barely fight you know instead of looking at it like that you you've looked at all of the ways of growth and all the the small successes that you have i, I think that's great for a lot of coaches to hear well yeah and don't get me wrong i'm not sitting here thrilled about a lot of things you know, <laughs> I know it was 14. I, I, I think we won 16. I know we lost 14. But, 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 but yeah, there's those little moments where we, I think we lost three times or we're up three under three, th- under 20. Sometimes your record just doesn't show how competitive you really were. Yeah. Right. And so, but, but we're up three and they hit a three and we lose. Yeah. And then fast forward, we're playing a district game. First, first half of the second round of district against Pierce, who's right there with us, you know, and, and then, and then, you know, Nimitz and Irving. It was a, going to the turn. It was a log jam. I mean, Lake Howes and Richardson were playing for first and second. We all. It was pretty. They're pretty good. Decided. They're they're pretty good. It was pretty much that. But um, they hit a three at the buzzer to tie it. You know, and and and, and like our kids didn't run over and say, "Ugh, it happened again." You know, they came over and said, "We we've dealt with this. Come on, we can do yeah, this." And yeah. We won in overtime. And like those are the ones, you know what I mean? Like, it, like it wasn't even that big of a crowd. It wasn't it was like, but like when we went in that locker room, we were like, we did it, man. We, I, we knew we could do this. Like it was one of those. It was almost like thank God that kid made that three, so we could see, yeah. you know, that we could that we could we could do those hard things that we could overcome that, uh, you know, and and I think yeah. you know, it, it was just it was cool. It was like it was one of those cool moments that those kids could 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 recover you know from because that's hard you know yeah. when you got it and the kid bangs a three and the buzzer and uh but you're right when relative experience can become actual experience that's a that's a powerful thing because early on you're you're trying to more talk about how will we deal with this and this and this but then after they've already done it or in the moment when they're doing it 
that's when those light bulb moments really happen. Well, it's almost a good thing, I think, early to lose some of those. So they see that it's hard. Yeah. Um, because when you respect the difficulty in something, well, you could win and it's just not going to stick the same. You, know, you can have the same, I can go, we have the same talk. We can emphasize the exact same points after a game, whether you win or lose, they're going to hear it better after a loss. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I wish, I wish it wasn't that way, but it's what it is. It's okay. Um, so it's kind of good. I think, especially with an experienced team to see, Hey, this is tough. You know, to, to make to make two free throws up two with eight seconds left, it's hard. I, th- I think there's a little nugget in there though too. Is it you know, as it just we're I love the we're just kind of flying in all different directions. Is one is scheduling. Um, I've been guilty of I think maybe because I don't I don't know uh, how well the guys will do, or, or it's a younger team, or, or your talent might be different. But scheduling on the, on the lighter side to maybe help their confidence with that. But then sometimes you can get false confidence through those moments. Dan Lee from John Paul II, which golly, I mean, they, he, he has incredible players. He doesn't deal with losing very much there, but he had a great point. When I talked with him, it was, uh, don't worry about your record, get better. It's like non, non district or pre district. Don't worry about that. Like play good teams, get, get your butt kicked, learn lessons from that. And I, I was a good reminder for me. Oh, yeah, I couldn't do it. We try to schedule. Well, and it also has a lot to do with your team, too. Like, I don't want to lose by 38 times, you know, because um, they're not going to learn a lot. I mean, you have to know your kids. You have to yeah, know their makeup. You know your, and you got to know, but it is. Scheduling is a big deal over here. Like, we put a lot of thought into it, you know, in our district. What kind of offices are we going to see? What kind of demons are okay? Yeah. kinds of things. And we try to. We try, no, we have a couple that we're going to play these guys every year. We're going to play this event every year, you know, and so, but I get made fun of all the time. My dad, by my dad, I don't know our non district district's record. I won't know it. What's yeah. your record? I don't know. I don't know. But I know our dad's record. <laughs> that's you know, right. Cause, cause that's really the only thing we talk about. We don't talk about winning state or AD. We, we just kind of talk about playoffs. We, we're, we're, we're conscientious of where we, what we need to be able to accomplish to get in the playoffs. But other than that, because like I said, who, what free meeting is not trying to win district, trying to win district? Yeah. Everyone's kind of going to have those. So I think the goals for us become, okay, how do we do that? How does this team do that? And so we'll have a list of things that they think they need to do that they come up with, you know? And so those kind of become our goals. What are we doing? Have you been doing these? Have you been working on your own? Have you been taking care of your, you know, making your decisions the weekend so you're rested? And, yeah. You know, whatever, whatever they come up with, you know, is what it is. You know, we'll have a, we'll have our, our base things we always emphasize, but um, we try to let the kids take a little ownership into that too. Anytime I get to talk to uh, a coach that's been at one place for a long time and had sustained success, not just the, I mean, we love the seasons where, golly, we just had a special group of players. They did amazing things, but the ability over seasons and maybe even a decade to have sustained, sustained success, that's, that's hard. Uh, what are some of the standards or pillars of your program? So when when that happened, right, the story I told earlier, when we kind of lost in the first round three years in a row. And, and don't, I'm not trying to you – know, I don't want if, – if, if the guys – It's not a negative thing good, towards them. They were right. good teams, right. right. And, and they may have beat us still. Well, one of them, I mean, it was, I mean, it was Allen during that. They got to the final four, and it was – we didn't really play that. That was – but it happened in that right. stretch. But the other two times we beat them, so we could beat them, you know. And I'm um, not to say that it's not easy to beat a team again, but you could. We we, we were different, you know what I mean. We were, when you watch the game, we were different, and it was it wasn't the same energy, it wasn't the same. So so anyway, what kind of what came out of that is like, oh, what what are we? What, what are we doing? What are we standing for? So I asked my assistants to tell me, like, all right, what do I value? Thinking about how I coach. What, what what I emphasize during practice, how I coach the kids, what are my values? You tell me based on my actions. So they kind of gave me some feedback. And then I asked some alumni, both kids who had great experience and kids who didn't have great experience, like, you know, what do you think? I'll tell you, that's a nerve wracking thing to do, you know, because mm-hmm. I'm sitting here praying, like, I hope they don't just all say winning, you know, and I hope he's all he cares about is winning and, and he'll, winning at all costs and all that. Mm-hmm. And so what came out of that was um, communication. 
accountability, coachability, and competitiveness, uh, which I like that list. I thought that made me feel good that, okay, I am kind of trying to do this. But now we kind of really emphasize those things. Um, um, and it's kind of been fun because once we named the things, we kind of dove into them a little bit more. And I've learned more about it a little bit, you know. And so um, those, are, those are kind of our pillars. We have kind of a, a base mantra of burn the boats. Like you've heard that name yeah. to burn the boat, yeah, yeah. And, and um, yeah, so burn the boat's kind of the foundation. Then our pillars are, are the four pillars, you know, I just said, and it's gonna, it, with the idea of being become great teammates, is the goal, you know, and, and hopefully they can, you know, in those big moments, I think if you think about what I have to do, you know, one point game, we're getting ready to inbound. Uh, well, if, if you're thinking about what you have to do, all of a sudden, maybe you're thinking how you might screw it up. Whereas if you're thinking about how you can help, all of a sudden you're thinking about what do I need to do? Yeah. And not thinking about what do I not want to do? And you get those kids to constantly be thinking about it's hard and it doesn't work all the time. You know, it probably doesn't work more than it doesn't, you know, but I mean, than it does, but, but I mean, to try to get them to think about how they can help their teammates or what they can contribute when it's, when the, when the, you know, when the, under a minute, you know, those yeah. tight situations is, is kind of a, the hope, you know, where all this is, is hopefully those pillars guide them to that, to where it's a constant, how can I contribute and help my teammates? If, if let's just hypothetical, if uh, your players were to walk in and they got on, you know, on with us and I asked them, hey, what are the pillars of your program? What do you think? Do you think you would have a lot of guys that could rattle them off? Or do you think they would look at me with a, uh, uh, you know, yeah. look, they know what you're talking about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. no, I don't think we just did it. We just, I usually gave him a quiz. So just the first thing we did is I gave him a quiz of the things we talk about a lot. And I think, and just to see, and you, I said, look, like, no you, I, I want to dive in. You, te- you just typed up questions and, I typed and up questions and I handed them out. And I said, I said, this is for me, not for you. I want to know how good a job I did at teaching you guys these things. Wow. And, and man, I think we had like 30 of them. And I think, I don't think anybody got all four, you know, and um, overall it wasn't bad though. I mean, because like competitiveness, a lot of the varsity guys forgot competitiveness. Yeah. Because it's every day. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And when I sit there like, oh yeah. And then there's things, <laughs> you, don't, you know what I mean? They almost wave their hand. Yeah. Cause you could take that the other way. They forgot competitiveness. Oh crap. No, that, no. It's, it's almost <laughs> so ingrained. Right. In you know what I mean? That they didn't even think about. It. Like, there's another one. So, so we have our. What do we not do during practice? And it's it's we don't get we don't get the ball with one hand. We don't walk. We don't grab our knees. So, two things that were really interesting about that one is they forgot don't grab our knees because they don't, and we didn't remind them. It just has become a habit for those old kids. That's a good and they place go, to yeah. be. And when I brought them, go, oh, yeah, I, we don't do that. But then I learned there's two that I didn't even think about that they put on there. They're like, well, there's more than three. I'm like, what are you talking about? Because we've got our shirt tucked in to start the practice and we don't leave balls laying around. I was like, oh, you're right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you know, yeah. you know Man, so what like, a helpful tool. Cool. Like, I, oh, uh, well, so here's what we do on Monday. So they play yeah. so many tournaments. They play so many tournaments. Yeah. And, and you'll have kids that play eight games. Yep. And we practice kind of one speed. So, like, um, you know, my brother's with the Pelicans. So when they come to Dallas, they'll come to our practices. And he just like I forgot how hard practice, how how hard high school kids practice, because like, they don't, you know, NBA guys don't practice like that. Right, they can't. They can't. They can't. They can't. Yeah, they gotta, yeah. yeah. Just, there's a lot more to manage. But but he's like God. They just and he's right. And so if if we don't pull the leash back, they're going to go again, you know. And so and I kind of got this from Coach Gregory at Timberview. He kind of I've kind of tweeted to say to us, but so on Mondays we don't do any in the morning. Um, so this is kind of cool at our school. We have two periods before and after school that are, could be athletic periods. So we don't, it can be as long as it's 45 minutes, it can be on either end of it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So as long as we just do one. So we go after school on Mondays and the first 15 minutes is talking about a culture. We'll show them a video or we'll talk. And that's what this quiz was great for. It's like, all right, where do we not really know some of this stuff? Mm-hmm. You know, and so those Mondays are going to be focused on these quizzes and we're, not like I'm mad at them. Like to be honest, I, this is what we fa- this is where I failed at helping these kids because if they're good at these things, it's going to help them be successful in our program. 
Whereas if they don't know these things, then I let them down because yeah. these are things I look for subconsciously. Like, like I didn't come up with these. You know, this is the things that I, so like, I, I think it's important they understand these because it's going to help us and it's going to help them get where they want to be, you know? And so this information is where I messed up. So let's fix it on these Mondays. And then we go get a bunch of shots up, you know? And so um, to kind of help them not overdo it. There's been, they, there's been so much gold already in, in our talk, but I, I do think that might be, that might be one of the best things so far as the, like actually having your players take a, a quiz on your standards, uh, uh, your 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 pillars. What what do we hang our hat on? What are some of the concepts that we believe in and how we have to live? I I used to I, I work with Matt Garnett. I don't know if you know him, Matt Garnett. He uh, he was a college coach for a little while at Wayland Baptist, but he does MG basketball camps. And we did a team camp, and I, one of the questions that I was doing a session with them is, raise your hand if you know what your coach values. And I kind of told them that also could be called pillars or standards, and only a couple people. So, like, how many of us believe that our programs stand for something and our players know our vision, but they don't? Yeah. Well, and I – to be honest, it wasn't that disappointing because if you think about it, none of the seniors were in there. So the guys that were in it for four years, like these are guys that had yeah. three weeks off and we lost in spring break, then came back and I gave them a piece of paper. You know, so they're familiar with I wasn't discouraged. It wasn't like we had a couple of kids that were blanks, basically, you know, but um, but we had some freshmen that nailed it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, uh, well, I just think it like all the things you talked about, it's an evaluation tool. Where's this group at? What do we yeah, need to What is. do we need to focus on? It, you've said it actually. Where do I need to be better? Like, yeah. I, I, they don't understand competitiveness, you know, <laughs> or they got it great. I don't know. Yeah. We're still figuring that out, you know. So you said it at the very beginning, though, about the book you read and what teachers are doing to help students learn. Like for us to think that doesn't apply to how we coach, uh, I, I think that's I think that's silly. <laughs> So making sure that uh, this evaluation tool and things like that, we know where they are so we can base our instruction and, and what we're doing in practice on what their real needs are, not just this written out, this is what we do every year on this day. I think there's a lot of brilliance to that. Well, and I, the thing is, no, and this is all, this is not mine. You know what I mean? So I, I'm, I'm with you, but it's like focusing on, creating the best way for them to learn and not creating the best place for me to talk hmm. and like making that change. Cause like, I got to get all this out. They got to know this stuff. They got to hear this stuff as opposed to how can they learn it? It's a really good mental shift when you're approaching break. There's another thing that, that came up in that book. That's been huge for my patients. And so we're going to do shell today and we're going to really work on baseline drives, backside guys drop, you know? And so then my assistant, I'll say, oh, what, what are they going to screw up? It's like, well, this, you know, the ball side guy's going to drop too low probably. And, the backside guy will be late getting the backside or, you know, the 45 cuts going to be wide open because, you know, we're not seeing both. And so we anticipate what they're going to mess up. And so when they mess it up, we're not reacting. Like, I can't believe you did that. We're like, yeah, okay, hold on. So here's what just happened. You know what I mean? And, and you kind of have a response ready, you know, and then uh, maybe you even have some questions ready. Like, okay, why do you get that? You know what I mean? So, and very rarely, especially the stuff that you do all the time, like it's probably like, there's not a whole lot of stuff you're surprised on that when they mess up some five out leads, you know what I mean? Or, mm -hmm. or your zone, you run, I mean, you run the zone. So th there's certain things that you know they're going to struggle with. So very rarely you caught off guard, but right. then to have some questions to help them work through it on their own. That's the other thing in that book. You ask questions instead of telling first. You say, okay, what'd you see or what'd you think or what were you watching? And all of a sudden they're like, I was watching this. It's like, why? Look, I don't know. I know. And I don't know. But if they say I don't know, that's your fault. That's the other thing. Yeah, accountability. I well yeah. If I yeah. say, if, if I ask you a question and you don't know, that's on me. You know, but it's great information that they have the courage to say that, as opposed to start guessing for twenty minutes, and then you can move on quicker. You know, and so I wonder how many times I'm coaching. Uh, I'm not really coaching. I'm just reacting. Like that, that was a great point. 
And that's the thing that helps with it though. And then it helped, it helped me with it though too is, is especially if I want to get fired up, you know, and it's so much better when you're in control when you get fired up versus when it just happens because they did something. So when, when you know it needs to be a practice where the urgency is high and the pace is high and the intensity is high, Okay, when this happens, I'm gonna get them with this. You know, when 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 they skip it and we're late on that closeout, or we don't X or we don't X switch, I'm gonna get them, but they're not paying attention. I can tell them. You know, especially if it's especially if it's him, because I know he knows. You know what I mean? <laughs> but then I mean, it, 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 it's it's so good because you're choosing it. Yeah. You know, and and that's what this book did. Is it is it just kind of gave you this this plan like you you almost plan your 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 responses to things that might happen by anticipating them you know and so it helps you handle it better to where they're learning and you're not saying you know and that's the thing man how are they going to learn it it's just like and i and every day i look back and i was like oh i messed that up <laughs> you know and, yeah. and sometimes you nail it you know but like that to, to go into it anticipating where they're going to need help is good it, take, it was, it was take good. out the guesswork stop relying on chance like i hope or hope i hope that they get it you know by by having that type of plan that you have um uh, coach speak is just something that pgc helped me a lot with it, but you just you hear it you even go watch games and you hear it i'm sure in my practice it, it practice is I, if i was going to record myself i would just hear empty phrases and chatter that actually aren't based on uh, to, to anybody or are going to, they're only to make me feel good. Yeah. But uh, I think the precision that you're talking about with coaching, it's just next level. But like realize the day I recorded myself, I was really working on all this and I was cringing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah. just, you know, you know, it's just, it's, it, it's a hard, it's just good ideas. It's, it, it's, it's hard to do. And, but just, it is a good shift that I'd recommend a lot of guys looking at is, is, is this a good learning environment for these guys to, to get, cause anytime you leave, you leave something feeling better. Like you learn something, like you got better is better. It, 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 that's the real definition of kind of fun. You know, it's when you get the most fun is when you feel like, man, that was my soccer coach says all the time, leave them, leave them lying on the court, exhausted and smiling. <laughs> right. Like that's the goal. I mean, if you can do that every practice. Yeah. I like that. It. You know, yeah, it's a great, it's a great little. Thing. How many coaches leave them lying on the court, but there's no smile? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot. Sometimes that's okay if you choose it. <laughs> you know, if it happens because you lost your mind. Coaches, the Jamoti podcast is powered by Biology. What's your BSA score? The Biology Skill Assessment is the only verified skills metric endorsed by the NIA and NJCAA to discover and develop the best talent for your team. This 10 minute, 100 shot test can be taken for free today on the Biology mobile app. Elevate your game. You always seem to stay so positive with your guys and represent your program really well. How do you maintain that year after year? I don't know, man. I, I um, it's so funny. I like we're so I'm 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 so I'm always self evaluating. So I don't I don't feel that all the time. You know what I mean? But yeah. Um, one thing that we do is that that kind of helps with that positive mindset is we try, and, and I'm not really good at this, but we try to give them things to do, and avoid telling them things not to do. Because if they're doing it, they don't know the other thing. So if you say don't do that, and I expect them to change, you don't give them the alternative. And okay, and, but if the majority of the feedback is don't, 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 then guess what? They're hearing that's they're still hearing. Don't don't you know? Don't be off balance. Don't be off balance. Don't be off balance. Said, hey, you need a stride stopper. You need a jump stopper. You need to keep your dribble. Or you need to go into a bar. And you just constantly try to give them other things. Um, and the other thing is I really like it here. You know, I really like, I, li I like a lot of the kids I get to coach. You know, it's, it's, I enjoy it. Like I enjoy being around these people. You know, like my staff are my friends. Like I have a guy's night every day. 
you know, I come in and it's just, I really am really, really lucky. Like I work at a really cool place to where I have a lot of respect for the families we work with and a lot of respect for, for the people I work for and work with. And, you know, we, you know, I'm, you're surrounded by teachers that are always trying to get better. The administration's changing things. That happen. So it's hard not to go to your office and say, okay, what am I doing? Like, how, yeah. how can I go? How can I get better? And it's a cool environment. Um, you know, don't get me wrong. I can walk around and find the people that don't like it. And they're, and they're, they're everywhere too. They're everywhere. Um, but that, that's part of a good place. If everybody's happy, I don't think you're reaching. You got, you got to have some people that don't like your decisions or you're not making any hard decisions, I think, you know? And so like to have those isn't a bad thing. So, yeah, so I'm trying to sum up kind of a few things because those, you know, the ability that you've had to, to maintain the, the culture that you have there over the years. One is to, you know, coach from a position of joy, more of the, the what can you do rather than focusing on the negative. Here's what you can't do. Like there's a, I, I do like the idea of know your nose, like the things that on defense you can't allow. And so I, I understand that concept in there, but there is a shift in uh, instead of those negative things, here are the things that we can do. Uh, I think that's powerful. But then, and also being at a place that you enjoy going to every day. Uh, and I think that's, you know, why do people make changes? Why do we need to look to go somewhere other place? If you're miserable, miserable every day, is it truly the atmosphere that you're in? Is there anything you could do to help that? You know, or do you need to look inward? Because I would imagine uh, you're able to see all the positives at the place where you are because of the person that you are. Well, yeah, maybe. And, and there's maybe a lot that goes into it, but I, I don't know. I, I haven't thought that much about it. <laughs> you know, it's a while. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I just think, I just really think this is a cool place. And so that's probably the lead. Because even though I'm talking about folks who know what they can do, I'm not good at it. I still say it. I still say, don't do that. Or, what yeah. are you doing? Or why? And I, it comes out. But then you try to catch it and then say, what should you have done? Here's what a good question. Better choice? Yeah, here's a good question to ask. It, ask your kids, what, what are some of the things that you hate that I say? And, and one, of the, one, of the, one of the phrases I, I would yell out is, that's not it. I just say, <laughs> we, we do something, that's not it. And I, I'm right in saying that this is not what we've practiced and what we've talked about, what we're trying to achieve. But what's the point in me saying that? Is it to allow all the parents to know that this isn't, hey, this isn't what we practiced. You know, this isn't, this isn't what it's supposed to look like guys. Uh, but that was a phrase that I had to take out. And it really, the only way that I knew that is because I asked those guys, what, what am I saying that you don't like? And uh, it was, that's a pretty cool. That's a good. I mean, I'm 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 not texting. I'm writing that down. No, you're I'm, good. You, you can you can. Well, text because me. we have we're having exit interviews with the seniors, and like one of the things I'm saying, what do we what do we do? What do you wish we did less of? What do you wish you did more of? You know what I mean? So like, what is it something I say that? It just I mean, makes it, you. Oh yeah. yeah. Like, what are you doing? You know, and so. Another one's gonna be interesting. I'm gonna see if they notice any of the little adjustments we made. You know, some of the returning guys. We, we don't have a lot of two year guys. You had a couple of seniors that were this is the only year they played varsity. So I, I don't know. They can, and plus, I mean, the COVID stuff was a, was a different animal, animal yeah. in terms of managing that. And I think it's it's gonna go into even next year in terms of where kids are at and where we're at and, and things like that. Just you know. You got 14 to 16 year olds when you, when you shut down basically for almost a year. That's a that's a big portion of their life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Percentage wise, a year is it much for me and you? No, for them, it's know, huge. It, yeah, like my kids were four when that started. Like that's a core of their life. They had a mask on and they're not doing it. You know, so what you know, so like point. they take their mask off. They're like, oh, they got sick. Put it back on. Like, no, they didn't get. Well, they got the normal stuff that you get. You know, when yeah. you're four. You yeah. know, and. You know, they tested negative. They don't tell, you know, not, I don't want to get into a COVID talk, but like it is something that it is something that you can't ignore. You know what I mean? There's going to be some growing pains coming, yep. along with a lot of good things that came out of it. You know, and so, yeah. um, but you know that that's another thing that I think with these exit interviews that, that may have an impact on some of their answers. You know, and so um, 
We, oh, it's, okay. it's something definitely to keep in mind because so it'll to, to me, it'll help you analyze and, and, and take the feedback that you need, but then also take everything they say with a little bit of a grain of salt. Like they're also coming from a really difficult time. So the negativity that they may have towards something, I don't know if that's really us as much as where they were in life in that moment. Yeah, right. Yes, exactly. And sometimes there's some other questions you can ask. I'm sure, depending on what list, where you can kind of get to the bottom of that um, as you're talking with them. But it's fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. Think about that. I mean, those are tough ones. You know, when yeah. you're trying to connect with kids and how to get it, it's just like, they're all different. Every team's so different, you know, and that's it's why you gotta like kind of start over every year, make sure they know. And there's so many years I would have just assumed they knew the pillars. Oh, they know them, you know. And you give them a quiz, and like you get one out of thirty. Well, coach, so many guys have played against you and know you, but with the after the speed round, uh, they're gonna really know you. And so, oh. you ready for this? Do it. All right, favorite ice cream flavor. Andy's frozen custard and Carrollton. If I'm taking it at home, vanilla with chocolate and peanuts. Good. Good question, man. For high school, shot clock or no shot clock? Shot clock. Shot clock. You guys are getting that next year, aren't you? Uh, SPC. SPC is working it in. I don't know if TAPS will get to that. I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's inevitable now, man. I'm excited for it. And and there's that's a whole other talk we could go (laughs) Uh, Texting or talking? Talking. Favorite holiday? St. Patrick's Day. Interesting. Interesting. Probably not because of what everyone thinks. That's a whole other talk, too. Well, b- maybe be- is it St. Patrick or is it a personal thing like uh, for, for yourself? or It's a personal thing. Okay. I've, had, there's a, I've had a number of really cool, life-changing things that happened on that day. It had nothing awesome. to do with the celebration necessarily. They just happened that day, you know, and so. That's awesome. I actually I watched a YouTube video uh, the other day about the actual St. Patrick. And, and how amazing of a, of a story that is, but how the holiday has been hijacked to, so, <laughs> to become green, green beer and leprechauns. But <laughs> I know, I know. Um, invisibility or super strength? If, if I'm super strength, can I jump so high that it's like I can fly? Then I want to do that one. I love that. It really or, just feels like I. What, what would I use for good with that? You know what I mean? Creepy. I, I, I don't know. Like the people that sh- that say invisibility. Like there's a there's a creepy aspect to invisibility. I think. <laughs> so, I, I, don't want to, I don't want to pay. For, I just want to jump everywhere. I just jump yeah, over. yeah. Um, <laughs> favorite place to travel or a place you most want to travel? Anywhere like Colorado, Montana. Anywhere there's fly fishing right. uh favorite tv show childhood scrubs nice that's a good one how many cups of coffee do you drink per day all of them as many as <laughs> only when i'm awake uh probably two to three okay but I, big cups They're i big fill cups. them up but i don't yeah. once it gets kind of not scalding hot anymore i'll dump it out you know yep. what i mean so yep. I, I, I can only finish one but then i'll have one, something to sip on a lot what if something happens to lukewarm coffee it's just not the same it's not the same uh last one probably the most important godfather or star wars i'm not i'm not i i'm more inclined to like the mob movies than than but i'm not not, not a big movie guy I, yes but okay. i'm more like a rom-com type guy really uh, I hate to say it, but it just like I need mindless man. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like but I also like just good stories, good acting. Like River runs through it. Shawshank Redemption, Son of a Woman, mm. that new movie Coda. Have you seen Coda? No. Oh man, it's so good. But like I, so like yeah. I'm not into a lot of special effects. I'm not into a lot yeah. of sh- and and I just kind of like. Good stories, man. I like the Jerry movies and stuff, but yeah, you gotta own. Yeah, I'm so proud that you own or uh, appreciate that you own that because I, I also love <laughs> rom coms and 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 there's nothing wrong with that. And the only thing is that they seem. I think the superhero movies, which I do love, those they've kind of taken over to where yeah. like there's just not that many romantic. Com- I think like the mid 2000s was a really good time for that. Or late 90s. Uh, there's not, not that many hill, anymore. I'll tell you, Notting Hill with a bucket of corn. See you tomorrow. 
Love it, man. Hey, this coach, this was so much fun. Oh, and, that was great. Oh, and, thank you. Oh, thank you for coming on and for sharing. And I do feel like it's one of those. I, I would like for this to be part one because I feel like we could talk for a long time about uh, even go more in depth into some basketball stuff. We should do a Jamodi hijacking, and I get to interview you, and then that that could be part two. But I'd be I'd part. be honored. You know, not many people not many people want to know what I think, but uh, <laughs> we well, wrote be- it. You, know, I mean, you wrote a book. Like we talk about definite success, man. You have a podcast. You're a head coach. You wrote a book, like. I shamelessly have it right, right back here. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah anybody, hey guys, if you listen to the podcast, buy the book. You get, some, get some, some pub. Oh, uh, thanks, man. Well, Coach, I appreciate you, and uh, I hope you have an awesome spring. Yeah, thank you. You too. That was great. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast, share it with your fellow coaches, and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti Podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.